would you recommend for your home theater television or a projector? <laughs> Which is, I just had this conversation this morning with someone on the phone. Um, we, you know, it's funny because I don't know whether in Australia we have this mentality of bigger is better and everyone wants this 150, 180 inch screen and then they're running, you know, a, a projector that's got 15,000, you know, 1500 lumens or 1800 lumens and they're really struggling with the image. Uh, being quite dull and not hitting HDR. And the thing is, is that, you know, people need to understand that doing that calculation and again, having that um, room design done or at least doing the research. I mean, you've got things like Projector Central and, you know, your local AV guy should know this, but, you know, working out that 130, 120 inches is pretty much the limit for something that's you know, 1500 lumens to 1800 lumens, which I think Andrew will agree with. Um, and if they, you know, if they really want something that bright and that colorful, then maybe they should be looking at a TV. Um, you know, I had a guy the other day who was disappointed with his 150 inch screen, but he was running a, you know, a 1500 lumen projector um, and, and was expecting it to look like a TV. Um, so, you know, nowadays, 100 inch, I think there's a 100 inch Sony that's coming out that's going to be, you know, 25 grand, you know, it's not unreachable, um, but matching the right projector with the right screen, um, you know, we've used some like a BenQ X12,000H, which was voted as one of the best projectors under $30,000 ever reviewed. Um, that uh, as a being a, um, uh, you know, with 150 inch screen, you're kind of pulling out some serious light you know, it's a light cannon, uh, and you could someone could walk into that room and think it was a television. Um, it, you know, it's that good. Um, but in a dedicated cinema, I mean, we've always installed projectors. Obviously, it's just nature of what we do. Um, yeah. um, I, some people I'm pretty, both. <laughs> I'm pretty single-minded on this one. If you're building a cinema, <laughs> it's a projector. You know, yeah. and and I think the reason there's there's two reasons in my head for that. One is a lot of us, I, I, and I'd be interested, I'd like to hear from, you know, from the people watching this, uh, I'd love to get your mm. feedback. I think there's a kind of a romantic, um, I don't know if romantic's the right word, but a historical um, emotional attachment to cinema. I, I remember my dad taking me to the cinema when I was a kid, and you've got that smoky stream of light hitting the screen, you've got the projector <laughs> yeah. flickering, you know, behind you. Um, there's there's that kind of emotional attachment to it's cinema. It's all part of the experience. Yeah. yeah, and that's part of it, right? The second thing is, and this is, I think this is really relevant, and a lot of people don't realise this. In the world that we live in, ninety percent of everything we look at is reflected light. You know, if you see a cat walking down the street, the colours that we see off it is a reflected source. A car, it's a reflected source. A house, it's a reflected light source. A projector on a screen is a reflected light source, which is why I think we like the image. Whereas a TV is uh, is an illuminated uh, or luminant light source. And it's, that's Direct. why it's kind of harsh and bright. Yeah. And, you know, look, it can look stunning and, and fantastic, but it's being um, illuminated at you. We don't see a cat walk down the street glowing generally, unless someone's done something funky to it. <laughs> um, so, uh, you know, so I think there's a psychological aspect to building a cinema. Uh, I think there's kind of a romantic aspect to it. Um, yeah. And and I think there's this this um, attachment to a reflected image, which is kind of softer and nicer. And and we associate that with the movies and with the escapism and, and that willing suspension of disbelief. So, you know, if someone comes to me and says, I want to build a cinema with a TV, I'm like, okay. I like I like Brian's <laughs> comment in the comments. Absolutely, projectors are like time machines, back in, taking you back to your childhood. And I think and I think that's relevant with what you said, Andrew. You know, at the end of the day, you know, the, the um, it's one of the reasons why we love using Barco projectors. There's that cinematic feel about them. You know, it, it just reminds you of, you know, when uh, Andrew used to manage cinemas back then. Was right, you know, Indiana Jones, or hmm. or you, you know, I remember watching Jurassic Park at the cinema. Um, and there's that connection that we automatically make part of the experience of this hobby is creating that memory and creating memories with family members. And the way COVID has forced a lot of these movie studios to ultimately go direct to 
um, uh, you know, um, HBO or whatever it is, um, more people are, are building cinemas at home. And, and I think that experience of projection, um, like using projectors, um, you just don't experience with a TV. Um, and, I think you know, if, you, if you compared, you know, if you think of a TV in a lounge room, you know, in a living space, white walls and, you know, metal and chrome and tiles or whatever you've got around the place and watching a movie there, or you look at a classic either home cinema or a real commercial cinema with, you know, the, the warmth and the fabric and the chairs and and the lights go down, everything disappears and you are immersed in the movie. They are two different experiences. And yeah. that's what we, you know, that's what our business is built on. That's what we intend for our customers. When you sit in our room, the, the the world around you should dissolve it should disappear and you should you should become part of whatever that experience is that you're having and and you should be absorbed in it and and like i talked about that willing suspension of disbelief uh you should feel like you're floating in the room and, and that that you are just integrated into this experience um and i don't think you can get that in the lounge room i don't have a problem with that you know if you want to have a tv and a, a sound system in the lounge room that's fine I, i've got that at home you mm -hmm. know that's yeah. not a crime we don't send the av police around but you know um if you're looking for a cinematic experience for that kind of romantic go to the movies feeling and and the lights start to dim I mean, I mean, there are so many subtle things, right? You can turn off a light, boom, it's gone. Or you yeah, can just yeah. dim them slowly. And and that's the thing that starts to send the chills up your spine because you know the next thing is the 20th Century Fox logo or the Universal logo or whatever it's going to be. And then the anticipation starts. And if you've achieved that, then you've built a great cinema. You yeah. know? And um, it, it's all these subtle bits and pieces. But anyone that comes over and subscribes to us, obviously we'll, we'll factor in over the next couple of weeks um, who's also subscribed to Shane's and um, we'll um, give away a, a free room design, um, which uh, obviously depending whether it's a new room or an established room, it doesn't matter. Um, you know, we can obviously do anything. Um, and uh, that means that those people get to work quite closely with myself and Andrew um, and build that relationship and maximising your space and your existing equipment if you've got existing equipment or looking at starting from scratch this is like a two thousand dollar value and if you mm. do guys if you guys do come over from the chat here from this video make sure you guys comment on one of their videos let them know that you actually did watch this stream and that will make it easier for them to pick a winner Absolutely. so who's going to win this this extravagant prize of room design for your future home theater and also since we're talking about uh, subscribing guys i also have a patreon as well so if you guys want to get up with me you can contact me any time of the day if i'm awake for as little as a dollar a month up to ten dollars a month listen there's all kinds of good good treats if you sign up for patreon i got a bunch of my patreon guys here in the chat now but for as little as a dollar a month, listen, you get some exclusive content. Discounts on AV equipment. I'm partners with uh, Value, Value Electronics. So if you're here in the U.S., you want to buy a new Denon receiver, a Marantz receiver, an NAD, a Bowers & Wilkins, a Trinov, whatever it is. Listen, if you are a Patreon subscriber, then I will save you some money going directly from them. Who knows? Maybe if you sign up, I might be able to save you some money in Australia as well with these guys. So for as little as a dollar a month, sign up for 10 bucks a month. Listen, I'll even video call you on Skype, on FaceTime, whatever. We can talk about your marital problems. Whatever you got, sign up on uh, Patreon. So that's available for you guys. Links are going to be in the video's description down below.